welcome to Fertility Friendly Food. I'm your host, Stephanie Velarkis, accredited practicing dietitian and nutritionist and director of The Dietologist, an Australian-based practice focused on optimizing fertility through nutrition. This podcast will bring you snack size episodes for you to learn, grow, and be inspired by the latest research, facts, and practical lifestyle tips about eating well for optimal fertility, helping you cut through the confusion and myths to take back some of the control on your fertility journey, one bite at a time. Welcome back to another episode of Fertility Friendly Food, the podcast. My name is Stephanie Velarkis, expert fertility dietitian and nutritionist and founder of The Dietologist. Now, I hope you have been enjoying our bite-sized episode so far. And today we have a, another, I guess you're not a special guest anymore. You're just a regular guest now. <laughs> Kay from The Dietologist, who's our team dietitian here, and we've had her on for a few episodes, but today we are going to be talking about alcohol and fertility. So welcome back, Kay. Thanks, Steph. I'm so excited to be back once again. Um, Yeah, I guess I am a bit of a regular guest on here, so everyone has to hear my voice a couple times. Um, But yeah, I'm so excited to be on another episode and to be recording this one. This is an interesting one. So what we're doing today is we're continuing with the theme of answering our clients' most asked questions. Um, So we've done a couple things on ages, we've done on caffeine, and today we're talking about alcohol. So um, we're talking about alcohol and its role in fertility. So as most of you would probably know, alcohol is off limits during pregnancy. And the reason being is because we just can't identify any safe limits for you or your baby. But what we often don't think about is how alcohol can affect our fertility. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. So what's really interesting is our current guidelines like here in Australia, um, around alcohol are a little outdated, um, but they, of course, still recommend that people who are planning to become pregnant pregnant or breastfeeding should be avoiding alcohol. Um, now, most people know about the pregnancy bit, but there's a lot of grey area when it comes to the impact of alcohol on conception. Um And it's really interesting because we know that a fair proportion of Australian women are consuming alcohol during the period of conception around 60%. So there is certainly a lot of alcohol consumption, whether it's um, because you unintentionally conceive or whether there is a, I guess, a lowering of alcohol. We don't really know from this data, but it's really interesting to see that most people are still drinking during the time around conception. So really, Really, we want to know what the impact is of alcohol on conception. So, Kay, can you talk us through what we know about alcohol and conception and pregnancy? Yep, those are really interesting findings. So I think this episode is a really important one. So what we know is that regular alcohol consumption throughout pregnancy and especially in the first trimester has been linked to a range of adverse outcomes, some of which include birth defects and impaired fetal brain development. What we don't know, though, is what quantity of alcohol can actually result in some of these issues, and it appears to be different for each woman. So the thing is that we will probably never know what the exact amount that can be harmful is because, first of all, it's way too unethical to do that kind of um, clinical trial. And also, I don't know a single person who will actively sign up for that. I most definitely would not. I assume you wouldn't either, Steph. So, um, yeah, basically not drinking is the safest option. However, like we said before, we don't really think about that impact of alcohol on fertility and IVF outcomes though. So I'll take you through some of the research. Firstly, a systematic review and meta-analysis which involved over 90,000 women of reproductive age saw that moderate to heavy drinking, which they classified as more than one standard drink per day, was associated with a 25% decreased chance of falling pregnant within one menstrual cycle or just one period. 
And they also found that any alcohol consumption, so regardless of how much, reduced this chance by 13%. So another more recent study, which was undertaken in Denmark with a group of 1,708 women undergoing fertility treatment, found no relationship between either low to moderate alcohol consumption every week. Um, and also outcomes such as achieving a clinical pregnancy, live birth following an IUI or IU, uh, IVF. Sorry. However, they did adjust for confounding factors. Um, confounding factors are just factors that may affect the results, such as age, BMI, smoking status, daily coffee consumption, chronic disease, education, and also how many cycles they had gone through, so periods they had gone through. So we also have a bit of conflicting evidence here. So another study did suggest that alcohol reduces your chances of live birth, um, any risk of fetal loss, and is also associated with multiple reproductive risks. This study also stated that IVF or any other assisted reproductive treatments should not be provided to women who are unwilling or unable to reduce their alcohol intake. So it's a pretty bold statement. Um, and there's also some research for the men as well. So sorry, gents, you're not off the hook here. Um, so studies in men suggest that long-term heavy alcohol consumption can, in fact, reduce fertility by reducing testosterone levels and interfering with the sperm production cycle. So we also have a systematic review, a pretty recent one, that looked at 15 studies and involved over 1,500 men. And they found that daily alcohol consumption does have a small but significant effect on sperm volume and morphology. So what we can see is that um, the evidence is a little bit conflicting and the extent to which alcohol affects fertilities in both males and females um, is quite inconclusive. However, what we can take from that is that there is some level of alcohol that can um, in fact, reduce our fertility or impact our fertility in a negative way. And here at The Dietologist, both Steph and I always encourage our clients who are trying to conceive to start beginning cutting down their alcohol intake. So if possible, limit alcohol intake to one to two standard drinks per week, obviously taking into account individual um, circumstances. So if you choose not to drink, Steph will share with us some of her best tips to avoid either drinking in social situations um, or cutting down as well. Thanks, Kay. Some really interesting um, research and, yeah, kind of mixed bag evidence there as well. Um, and it's really tricky because often we get the question, right, that how much is too much and what's the limit and when in the cycle is okay and is it okay if I'm on my period to have a glass of wine and so on. Um, and it's, it's, a really, it's a really tricky question to answer because we don't exactly know. Um, but most of the data is looking at, you know, we're trying to keep below really seven standard drinks per week for, for women and up to 14 standard drinks for men um, or less is, is ideal. Um, if you're going to drink, but the less the better. <laughs> so not to say that gives you free reign, um, but just to give you a bit of a ballpark um, idea. So for those that are choosing not to drink um, and you feel a little bit of pressure or social pressure around that or you feel like you're going to get questions about trying to conceive um, or whether you're pregnant or not, which can obviously come across as a little bit insensitive, particularly when you're trying to conceive. It can just sting a little bit. Um, I wanted to share some of my favourite excuses <laughs> to help combat those questions in those social settings. So um, here's uh, my top excuses. Um, and as someone who went through all of my university years not drinking alcohol, uh, I can say I've certainly used these <laughs> myself. So the first one is I'm the designated driver tonight. That's an easy one. The second is it's actually my New Year's resolution not to drink, which is particularly great at the start of the year. Um, I've got a headache already. I'm taking medication like an antibiotic and I can't drink whilst taking them. I have irritable bowel syndrome and alcohol is one of my triggers, um, which is always uh, a really fun one to make everyone else feel really awkward. Um, so they'll generally zip it pretty quick after that. Now, I totally 
think that, you know, the pressure to drink alcohol, particularly in Australia in the social setting is, you know, it should it be there? Absolutely not. But is it there? In reality, it is. So I just wanted to arm you with some of these um, get out of jail free cards, so to speak, um, if you're in that situation. But how do you go about getting a non-alcoholic beverage replacement either so it can look like you might be still drinking or to just feel part of it by not having just water? So I usually suggest getting a mocktail, um, which looks like a cocktail, asking bartenders to put non-alcoholic drinks like juice or lemonade or soda water in short glasses instead of tall glasses. Um, BYO mixes to barbecues and parties so you can make something up yourself without too many questions. Um, Try kombucha if you're not pregnant uh, with some mint fruit um, or, you know, some extra ice that can really, really look like a cocktail to be honest. And try sparkling water infused with cold infusion tea, which is one of my favourite like summary tricks is to do that as well. So, Kay, can you wrap us up for our alcohol and fertility episode? Yep. Thank you, Steph. Again, those are some fantastic tips. Um, My favorite one is to get a mocktail that looks like a cocktail and they're always really delicious. So you're getting something out of it as well. Um, Well, yep, that wraps up our episode for today. Thank you so much again for having me on the episode, Steph. Um, As I say every time, I love recording these podcasts and I hope they equip you with the information you need to start your um, journey to conceive. And um, I think this one is a really important one because we really do get asked about alcohol all the time in clinic. So if you do need any assistance, remember we are here for you and you can book in to see us, either of us in clinic. All right, everyone, that is the end of today's podcast episode. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a rating and a review in Apple Podcasts. That just helps us get into more ears and share with your partner, friends or family. And don't forget to save your seat to my next free online masterclass available all around the world from your laptop to learn about the four key fertility diet mistakes that I see my clients making and what to do instead. The link is in the show notes below for you to save your seat. I've gotten some awesome feedback on this masterclass from previous participants, so I know you will absolutely love it. I will catch you in the next episode, everyone. Bye. (laughs) 